I mean, you're obviously in a very male dominated sport and it's, it's slowly, slowly changing, right? But do you, do you find the same thing? Is it a sense of entitlement for men that it should just be male only or, or what, what is driving the kind of abuse that's going on there? Yeah, I mean, arguably that that might be the case. I think, you know, women's football is on the rise in, in the UK. Um, you know, women have been playing since the ends of time. And if you know about the history of the, of the sport, obviously it was banned for 50 years. So it set women back. And that was largely because women had certain roles within society and sport was not one of them. And that was a space that they weren't sort of allowed to occupy and now the times have changed and I think a lot more people are open minded and are getting behind that. But there is a sense of like, you know, ownership, if you like, or male entitlement to this like tribal culture that they don't want women necessarily to partake in. Um, and I think that's where that kind of misogyny sometimes jumps out, especially on online platforms. And so it's really challenging these ideas that, you know, sport or any kind of industry, if you like, is for all is for across gender you know women should be able to you know work in as doctors as bus drivers as football players as, as whatever but you know that 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 element of it is 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 largely part of why that comes out and the comparators as anna mentioned to, as well is this whole idea that we've got to compare men to women um all the time which is just so unnecessary like we all have different and unique skills and different um, emotional you know kinds of intelligence and, and and things like that that we we need to, to work together that we need to share ideas that we need to build and evolve our our sport and our culture and things like that so i think when we can you know when the game and went online and and sort of the the, the people that interact with it um start to change and learn and, and, and educate themselves basically is is one way we're going to be able to shift it but the difficulty is as anna mentioned that there are no filters we we need these filters um that remove the kind of anonymity as well that allow targeted abuse and for people to not feel like their words cause harm um and you know and, the, and the, that there's a consequence at the end of what you're saying and what you're doing because that's the only way you really shift that behavior yeah, go on, That's Anna. it. You, because we were uh, programmed, you know, to uh, communicate with maybe twenty people a month max, and I think that's what people forget. It's not necessarily those isolated words. It's the, um, it's that sort of tsunami. Um, you know, if you put one foot wrong, or if maybe you didn't get that penalty, or maybe, um, you know, I didn't say things in the way people wanted me to around childcare costs. You know, if you don't operate on that perfect line, that mm. sort of um, yeah, it's sort of it's like walking uh, the plank almost. You know, <laughs> you know you're going to come off the edge at some point. Um, yeah, people, they yeah, like I say they get the pitchforks out, and it's uh, yeah, it's a very difficult line to tread. 